Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased perspective, of course. Um, so today I would like to tell you about this little beast here. So I recently got into possession of um, a Australian 50 cent coin, which reminded me that I wanted to do this video for quite a long time. So this will be a main player. Um, and if you're wondering now, it's actually not so easy to get them if you never pay cash. Anyway, so here is it again, the Australian 50 cent coin. You will see a much better picture in a sec. So as I said, this motivated me to do this video, which I wanted to do for a long time because it's kind of a very surprising um, fact that kind of nice theorems involved. And if you haven't seen what roundness means, that's kind of the topic of this video, then um, we'll have a look. Uh, it's very surprising in some sense, it's kind of a little bit counterintuitive. Uh, well known, of course, for a long time, and there's pretty cute theorems involved. And it's actually an active uh, field of research in, in some sense. The story will be that my circle has corners. So here's it again, um, the Australian 50 cent coin. Uh, it doesn't really look like a circle. We'll see a much better picture in a sec. I wasn't able to get my uh, hands on the real coin, which I would like to present here live, but I have a picture and we'll see. The question itself is very innocent. It looks very, very innocent. So what is roundness? So how do you define mathematical roundness? So how can you measure how far away, if you want, an object is from being a circle? So if you ask this question, I could come up with two answers. The standard answer maybe would be that it's those objects of radius, of a fixed radius, in this illustration, whatever it is, and then all points, um, whatever x squared, plus y squared, small or equal to r squared. Um, and that's already the kind of sophisticated answer if you think about it. We're just giving this answer most of the time because we're all so biased and we have seen circles for way too long. So um, when I learned, first learned about what I'm going to tell you, I realized actually um, that I have a very biased perspective on circles because of course I had whatever, how many years of uh, school education that told me what a circle is, namely kind of this type of equation here, right? Um, but if you think about it a little bit in non-mathematical context, then maybe a lot of people would answer, it's an object of constant width. So what's an object of constant width? Well, as you can see here in my little picture, I have, well, two slides, two, two horizontal lines, and I call this a width. It's whatever, it's a certain number. You could think of it as being one or whatever, whatever you want, some, some unit. And an object of constant width, so a round object, would be something that slides freely uh, through through this through this two horizontal lines, right? So it's like if you have a coin and you throw it into some machine, then there will be a slit somewhere, and it fits perfectly through the slit, and it kind of slides through the machine, right? A round object sounds like re a reasonable definition to me if you think about it, right? Forget, as I said, forget a little bit that we are all biased and have some long, long history of school education. Um, so this sounds like a reasonable definition because of course a circle satisfies this, this definition. Like right? it is an object of constant width. It slides perfectly fine through my two horizontal lines, right? By the way, it doesn't really matter whether it's horizontal or not. It just slides perfectly fine through um, all of those lines. And the question kind of that people ask, what about the converse? Is every object of constant width actually a circle? That's not so clear to me. Um, I would have guessed probably yes, uh, if you just, if I wouldn't be as biased as I am after years and years of mathematical education. But um, yeah, so I, as I said, I probably would have guessed yes. Turns out that it is of course not the case. And this is where my good old friend, and this is a much nicer picture for you, of course, uh, my good old friend, the 50 cent coin comes into the game. As you can see, this is certainly not a circle three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. It's actually a funny cat type of 12 gun, but it's an object of constant width, or of course, approximately an object of constant width. Um, and I'm going to explain how to construct those and what kind of little properties, at least the first constructions are satisfied. So actually it turns out that objects of constant width are really rarely circles. They're more like those uh, Australian 50 cent coins they're more like shapes like this, um, which again, it's an object of constant width. So it satisfies this property. So if you would throw the coin into a machine, it perfectly uh, slid through. In other words, 
this thing is an object of constant width, but it's definitely not a circle, right? We just counted the number of uh, edges through 12. So it's a funny version of 12 front. It's not really a 12 front. I'm going to show you what it is actually in a second. And this is a really a common engineering problem. So in engineering, you always want to kind of, not always, but often, very often you want to know, um, is the object I'm considering now a circle or is it something different? And uh, the right test for this is not so clear what it should be, but it certainly shouldn't be such a slit test where you fit your object into uh, between two lines and just let, let it slit through because most of the objects that perfectly slit um, they're not circles. So it's kind of kind of a tricky thing for engineers um, to get this straight. And it's always very confusing and whatever. So let me show you several examples. It's, it's kind of really amazing. It's a zoo out of out there out of, made of these objects of constant width, which are very, very far away from being circles. So here is um, a, a very famous triangle type thing. I'm going to show you this in the Mathematica demonstration linked in the description in a second. And it's probably the most famous coin of constant width so from Bermuda. I wasn't able to get that one. I only have my uh, Australian 50 cents. Uh, so this is obviously even more extreme, right? It's, it's a triangle. And it's of constant width. We will see that in, in a second in a, in a much nicer demonstration. As I said, Mathematica linked in the description. Um, turns out that what I'm going to show you, they are mostly non-smooth examples. I'm also going to explain a little bit of those, uh, how to get smooth examples, which is very surprising. So we can actually make this smooth, not being a circle, of course. Um, and we'll see how that works. But first, the, the Mathematica demonstration. So here's my Mathematica demonstration, uh, linked in the description. Um, and um, yeah, well, it's, it's a Bermuda coin, as you can see. So this should be, uh, well, now a mathematical demonstration of the Bermuda coin. It's this triangle, which is made out of three vertices. It's a triangle, but it's not a triangle in the classical sense. So as you can see, it doesn't have straight edges, but it has these round edges. And the way to construct it, we'll see an another construction in a second or another demonstration in a second, is that you take, well, let's say this top point here and you draw a circle uh, or part of a circle. So you take a compass and draw part of the circle and you do this at each point. So this point is a certain radius away from this arc here. This point is the same radius away from this arc here. And for the last pair of vert vertex and arc, it's the same. So you have three arcs and you glue them together in this triangle type shape. And you get an object of constant width, which perfectly slits um, in my square here, which is of course just a different demonstration of uh, having two horizontal lines. Uh, so let's see, it, it perfectly works in this square, as you can see, no problem. And it not, not just that it rotates very, very nicely in this square, but also this blue line that attracts. So the endpoints track this blue line that you can see here. So the blue line, um, or the interior of the blue line, if you want, that's 99% roughly of the area of the square. So it's not just it perfectly fits through the square through my horizontal lines, because it is an object of constant width. But also, it kind of <laughs> draws uh, out the whole uh, square. So it, in some sense, it is a square, which is a little bit surprising. So here's another demonstration of how to make them. Um, those square type things, they are much more like squares than circles, actually. Um, and it's the same idea. You have three points of a triangle. Uh, around each point, basically, at each vertex, you draw an arc, and you connect them in a nice way. And in this demonstration, you can actually well, it doesn't really matter how your triangle in the middle looks like. You can just vary it. And all of those shapes that you see here, they get very circular at one point. They get very triangle shapey at, at other points. All of these are objects of constant width. So, but most of them, of course, are far away from being circles, right? So our naive, or at least my naive approach that an object of constant width is a circle is just horrible. It's very, very false. Uh, we'll make a more precise statement in a second. Um, so uh, here again, my, my Australian 50 cent coin and a little bit more extreme here, this coin, which I wasn't able to get. And of course, um, Great Britain is also very famous for having many coins uh, which are not really circles, but those uh, objects of constant width. And again, it doesn't really matter if you throw them in a machine, the machine can't see the difference because it slits through uh, perfectly fine. That's kind of the whole problem. And if you're really interested in distinguishing them, then you need to come up with a better idea. 
So uh, a lot of engineering problems arise from not being really able to tell whether an object is round or not, right? So for a coin, of course, it's easy. I can just take it into my hand. But imagine you have something that you can't take into your hand because it's whatever, very far away, and you would need to figure out whether it's a circle or not. Don't do the slit test. That's misleading, OK? Just don't do that. Anyway, um, so even the statement, um, so those triangles that I just showed you, they are not really smooth. They have the three points where I draw the arcs around that are along those points. They're just not smooth. But actually, you can produce smooth ones as well. So even the statement that a smooth object of constant width is a circle is wrong. It's actually pretty wrong yeah, still. And that's a kind of a funny way of doing this. So you could use certain polynomial equations. So this thing here was designed using this polynomial equation, the two variables. I don't too look too close at the, um, at the entries. I, I linked the paper in the description. It's actually a pretty nice idea. So um, you have a polynomial equation, f, x, y, so two variables equals 0. And whatever the 0 set is, it uh, will be an object of constant width if the polynomial is chosen in the right way. I don't have a good answer what polynomials will do, but there's a funny theorem that you need at least a polynomial of degree 8 to work. Um, and for, for example, this is a polynomial of degree 8, as you can see uh, here. It has an x squared to the fourth, and it has a y squared to the fourth. So um, it's a polynomial of degree 8, which is, as I said, the minimal degree of a polynomial you can use. And then it's kind of weird, and I'm not quite sure what to say about it, and I think nobody really is. Because then you have really weird coefficients showing up here. Uh, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, so this will be this will give you a smooth object of constant width by just tracking the zeros of this polynomial, which I personally find very uh, mind blowing. So it's you take a degree eight polynomial, you can't take all of them, most of them won't do. You take certain degree eight polynomials and they spit out objects of constant width, which are actually smooth. But I have no idea. That sounds very mind blowing to me, right? And the, the theorem is um, those objects actually exist in any dimension. So again, don't look too close at this formula. But this is, again, a polynomial. Um, and this polynomial will now trace, or the, the zero of the polynomial will now trace an object of constant width, so in any, in any direction, um, um, in three space, as you can see here, which looks a little bit like a really ill-shaped ball, a little bit like the triangle was a little bit like a round triangle. This looks like a little bit like a, a round tetrahedron or something like that. Um, funny fact, it's again a degree 8 polynomial which traces it out. Uh, I have no idea uh, why degree 8, but apparently degree 8 here is very important. So the theorem for today is that those things exist really in absolutely any dimension, um, which is already a, bit, a little bit surprising. But almost all of them actually are smooth. So, um, the, you, you can throw a measure on this and make everything precise, but basically, as the number of smooth objects among of constant width among the number of all objects of constant width goes goes to one. So you can always approximate everything using uh, objects of smooth constant width, a smooth object of constant width, which is a bit surprising because the kind of the easiest constructions are those uh, triangles or um, whatever kind of multi edge shaped objects, which are not smooth. They always have those edgy points, which are, as I said, not smooth. But anyway, you can do very, very well with smooth. And most of them are actually, I, I don't have a precise statement, but I think most of them are actually constructed using roots of polynomials. And it's actually weirder. It's even, even weirder. So the, the main statement, which I find very, very mind blowing, is um, you can actually find smooth objects of constant width, which are in some sense as far away from a from a circle or from a sphere or whatever you want or from a ball as possible because they don't have any symmetries. So the, the, the symmetry group is trivial. Uh, with contrast, the symmetry group of a ball of a circle is pretty huge because you can just turn uh, the circle or the, the sphere around any angle. So it's huge, it's infinite. But you can build those objects, those smooth objects of constant width. They slide perfectly, OK? They still slide perfectly through your slit. And they have absolutely no symmetries at all, which I find very mind blowing. Um, to construct those, you need bigger type of polynomials. Um, I wasn't really able to find uh, a, a, a small, nice polynomial who does that. But some links are in the description. So basically, the idea is you take the equation that draws the sphere or the circle and you perturb it a little bit um, using an error term. 
and you get those objects of constant widths, which are uh, smooth objects of constant widths, which are so finely flawed, so you almost can't distinguish them from a circle, but they are not a circle in a very strong sense because they don't have any symmetries. Just, I think, a pretty cool statement. Um, yeah, so let me actually tell you now how you would define roundness, because in the end, um, this is the topic of this video. Turns out that there is no really a good definition or a really accepted definition. So I took this definition here from um, uh, engineering book, engineering mathematics. I haven't seen any real definition in mathematics in some sense. Um, turns out that this is not so easy to define, but this tool does reasonably well. Uh, problem is, of course, uh, if you think about it a little bit, it will only do for a reasonable shape. You could certainly do this in any dimension, but this, you need a reasonable shape. So a square, for example, is a reasonable shape. And how you would define roundness or what comes close to the definition of roundness, so measuring how far you are away from a circle is the following trick. So you take your object, so for example, the square here, or this uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight gun, which is not quite this one here, but anyway, it's an eight gun. And you have an internal fitting circle. So you take the one that fits perfectly inside, you take the one that fits perfectly outside, and you, uh, well, same here, outside, inside, and you take the ratio of the rate, the radi. Okay, so inside fitting circle, outside fitting circle. Of course, it only makes sense for all reasonable, for some reasonable shapes, but anyway. Um, and that's a really actually a good definition in some sense of um, roundness. So roundness is inside over outside radius. Uh, so the square is not very round. Of course, the circle is just uh, one, right? Because inside is outside. So uh, the circle has roundness one. And the smaller this number is, the less round you are. So the square here is roughly uh, 0 0.7. And this, whatever it was, 8 gun is roughly 0 0.9. Because, of course, it is a little bit more circle-like than um, the square, as you would expect it to be, right? Um, so it turns out that uh, this is a necessary condition. Uh, so, uh, no, sorry, this is sufficient condition to have constant widths, but, of course, it's, it's not the, the converse. And, yeah, so this definition certainly works in any dimension. And this is what usually engineers use in order to, well, uh, define or define what roundness means which is still not really easy to decide how to measure that in practice. Because as I said, if you have an object which you can't really access, and then it's maybe not so easy to put in an outside fitting sphere and an inside fitting sphere. Um, maybe even, even if you can uh, have it in your hand, then it's still not so easy to put in an outside fitting sphere and an inside fitting sphere. And it's a whole topic of engineering mathematics. Maybe not a super important topic, but it's still a, a topic of engineering mathematics how to really measure um, roundness in a, in a really good sense, in a practical, useful sense. So anyway, that was the story for today, which I liked a lot, as I said. And yeah, I recently paid cash, which doesn't happen so often, and I got the 50 cent coin, which made me, first of all, very happy and reminded me that I wanted to do this video. So um, an object of constant width doesn't need to be a circle. Actually, in some sense, right, remember the symmetry move, an object of constant width can be arbitrary far away from being a circle, which I find personally very mind-blowing. I hope you find that also mind-blowing, or at least you. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I also hope to see you next time.